I transcribed one chorus of a Stefan Grappelli solo over the tune Django's Tiger, and this is what I learned from it. You hear this all the time. If you want to get good at playing jazz, you've got to transcribe, transcribe, transcribe. A lot of people say it, and they're not lying. But sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to know sort of what we should do once we've done it. Let's say you've transcribed a solo, and you're thinking, cool, well, I've learned this solo. I can play it on my instrument. I can play it from memory. Maybe I've written it down, but I don't really know what to do with it. Well, in this video, I'm taking you through sort of what I do when I transcribe something. And in this instance, I've transcribed Stefan Grappelli playing over Django's Tiger. Before we get into it, please subscribe to my channel. It means a lot. Every time I get a subscriber, it really helps me as a content creator. Now we've got that bit out of the way, let's, uh, let's hear the solo. <laughs> So there's three things that I took from this solo that really stood out to me that I want to talk to you guys about. And one of them is phrasing. We're going to look at the first eight bars and I'll just play that little bit for you. One, two, a one. Now, the phrase in here is really, really lovely. It's really clever and it's really musical. And the first thing that jumps out to me here when it comes to phrasing is how many phrases Grappelli plays in this little section. So this little section that we're looking at, eight bars long, but Grappelli plays three lines, okay? So rather than sort of starting and ending his phrases at the beginning of each four bars or each two bars, his phrases go over the bar lines and go over all of these sort of sections of the piece or of the chords, and he's playing three phrases over eight bars, which is a bit like three over four, which is sort of what swing rhythm's made out of. I think that's a coincidence. There is an element of tension here. There's an element of sort of like rhythmic tension, but it's more like phrasing tension. It's this three lines over the space of eight bars, rather than it just being loads of twos and fours and things in sort of even numbers. We're getting this odd over even, and it really does create interesting music, in my opinion. So what we can do with this little bit of information is two things. First of all, we can just try improvising and saying to ourselves, look, we're gonna restrict our playing to only having three lines over this eight bars. So I'm going to improvise over this eight bars and I'm going to try and make sure that I only improvise three lines. I'm not allowed to play any more and I'm not allowed to play any less than that. Let's have a go. <laughs> So what ends up happening there is I'm just sort of playing stuff that I would never usually play because I've restricted myself in this way. I'm not really thinking too much about the notes. I'm only thinking, hey, it's got to be three over eight. The other thing we can do with this is actually be a little bit more specific and say, right, well, I'm going to try and learn this rhythm, the specific phrasing and the specific rhythms that Grappelli plays and try and improvise something within that. The best way to start doing this is to try and is to make sure that you can sort of sing the rhythm without hearing the music first. So I'll do that now. Right. So you want to get to the point that you can do that before you go to try and improvise with it. That being said, let's go. Okay, so what's happening there again is I'm playing stuff that I would definitely not be playing if I wasn't trying to restrict myself in this way. This is a perfect example of how we can practice improvisation uh, in new ways every time. For example, you could 
do this with a new solo every day if you really wanted to and just think about this and you're going to end up coming out with stuff that's new coming out with stuff that nobody else has come out with and you end up coming out with stuff that's basically you what you've done is you've taken inspiration uh, rhythmic and phrasing inspiration from one of the greats and then you've turned it into something that's specifically for you and that's I think very important when it comes to learning to improvise and practicing improvisation. The second thing we're taking from this solo is an enclosure. Now, you might have heard me talk about enclosures before, and if you do want to learn more about enclosures, please follow the link in the description of this video uh, where you can download a free copy of my ebook. It's a little excerpt of a bigger ebook that's coming out later called Enclosures for Jazz Violin. Follow the link in the description below and you'll get a copy of that free ebook excerpt sent straight to your inbox. But briefly, if you don't know what enclosures are, I'm going to tell you about it right now. An enclosure is a way to treat certain notes. So you've got a target note, which is the note that you're aiming for, and then you can enclose that target note with surrounding notes. And there are hundreds of different ways of doing that. Like I said, if you want to learn more about that, check out my ebook. But for now, the enclosure is from this line. So we start on the note. We go underneath by a semitone. Then we go over by a scale note. So a note within the scale. And then down onto that note again. And then under it one more time. And then on, like this. So what we can do is we can take this enclosure and we can practice it all the way through the A major scale because this tune is in A major. So let's go down here. And then the next one, do the same thing with B. So on, under, over, on. Under. And the same thing with C sharp. Same thing with D. With E. Hopefully you were able to practice along with that little enclosure there. And if you're interested in practicing enclosures like that with me on a regular basis, you can do so via my Patreon account, which is where I run my Jazz Violin Practice Club. So the Jazz Violin Practice Club is a way that I practice interesting lines just like this, take away the enclosures and the different things that I think make that line what it is and practice it together on Zoom. I've been running these sessions for years now. I run them every Monday at 6 p.m. That's UK time. And if you join my Jazz Violin Practice Club Patreon, you can get access to those classes, access to extra material, and access to uh, written solos that I put together for the class every month. It's a great way to get motivation to practice because you're doing it with other people. And we make sure we have a good bit of fun along the way as well. So if you'd like to join that, please check out the link below. You can practice that stuff so the cows come home. What we were doing there is we were playing the A major scale and we were enclosing each note in that way that we discussed earlier. What we can start to try and do now is try and add that to our playing. So what I'm going to do is 
improvise over this tune again and I'm going to try and slam in as many of those enclosures as I possibly can. I'm going to try and en enclose chord tones as much as I can um, but I'm just going to try and have fun and try and throw it in there. Let's have a go. <laughs> This is one way to try and get these ideas into our playing. It's to do it in a sort of forceful way. It's not how we want to play when we're playing a gig. We don't want to play like this when we're jamming with people. But when we're practicing at home, it's a really good way to try and force these ideas that we've taken from somebody else uh, and make it into our own thing. And you'll find that you're gonna f you're gonna find the places on the instrument that it it works best for you and you're going to find things that you like more you're going to find places for it that you like the most and again this is how we end up coming up with our own musical language the last thing i'm going to do is going to take some uh, real practical harmonic advice from a couple of the lines that grappelli plays and we're going to go for the lines that he plays on the first long e7 so these are the two lines <laughs> On the way up, he's generally playing around with the F diminished arpeggio. If we want to add some interesting sounds to our dominant chords, we can go one semitone above the root note. In this instance, we're going to F, which is one semitone above E, and play the diminished arpeggio on top of it. Mainly, it gives us a flat nine over the seven chord, um, plus all the chord tones of that seven chord. Also remember that an F diminished chord is the same as an A flat diminished chord, it's the same as a B diminished chord, it's the same as a D diminished chord. They all have the same notes in them. They are all the same. And that is also all of those notes I just said. They are the notes in an F diminished chord. Huh? All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just try and stick around that F diminished idea. I'm going to play over the first half of Django's Tiger. And when we get to the E7, I'm just going to try and stick with just playing the notes from the F diminished arpeggio. <laughs> The last thing is the sort of second half of, of his line here. He goes. Right. And I think it's really interesting because I transcribed the Django solo on this recording. Um, you know, it's from the same recording. So the same session, it's the same tune. Um, and Django uses a very similar idea over the E7. Uh, and what's happening here could be described as uh, F melodic minor over E7. Uh, I go more into detail about that in my earlier video where I look at Django's solo on here. So if you want to find out the theory of that, then uh, please check out that video. But for the time being, I'm going to take this specific idea, this specific arrangement of notes, um, and I'm going to try and improvise with it and try and make my own thing out of it. So the rhythm might change, but I'm going to try and stick with this, these notes. And these notes are, I guess, E, F, and G, right? So, Grappelli's line. Right, so I'm going to just try and mess around with those notes. in whichever way I want to. Um, and we're gonna improvise over the first half of this tune again, and I'm just gonna mess around with those notes. Let's do it. Okay. 
Okay, so we've taken basically three ideas. We could call it four, actually, because that last one was sort of two ideas. But we've taken three aspects of Grappelli's solo, one of them being phrasing, the other one being a specific enclosure, and the last one being two specific line ideas. And I've tried to improvise using uh, concepts from these three aspects of Grappelli's playing. I would urge you to try and do the same thing. First of all, with these ideas, I think you'll, there's a lot that you can get from e these specific ideas. But this is mainly a way of showing you how you, as a jazz violinist, can take material from your favorite solos played by your favorite musicians and turn it into something that's yours. We're not copying Grappelli, but we are taking inspiration from his ideas. We're managing to get there because we're looking at it with an inquisitive mind. This for sure is one great way of going ahead if we want to both pay homage to uh, our favorite musicians, uh, but also create our own sound. If you're enjoying this video, please like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. Please also download my free ebook, Introduction to Enclosures. And if you really do enjoy my teaching, please think about joining the Jazz Violin Practice Club. Um, like I said, it's a way that you can practice with me and others on Zoom, but it's also a way that you can just learn from me and take weekly ideas and tips from me uh, to put into your own practice. The Jazz Violin Practice Club gives you one weekly guided practice session with me. It gives you one monthly Q&A session with me where you can ask me anything about what you're working on tell me what you're doing and i can give you advice on all that stuff uh, it gives you access to my padlet where you can see everything that we're doing in the jazz violin practice club as well as any extra teaching material that i'm putting together you will always get access to it you also get each of the lessons recorded and posted to the padlet so you have a really simple and easy easy place to find everything and work on it on your own. So even if you can't make every session or even if you can't make any of the sessions, joining still makes a lot of sense because you get all of the recorded videos, you get all of the extra material. What's not to like? Check out the link below and you can get a free trial for that if you're interested. Thanks so much for checking out this video today, guys. See you again soon.